All right, this is lesson 2.3 of our pre-calc 11 class. Lesson 2 is on polynomials. Lesson unit 2 is called polynomials. And lesson 3 is called difference of squares. What we're going to learn in this lesson is how to identify when a polynomial is a difference of squares, and then how to factor a difference of squares. Uh, the good news is, um, once you know how to do this, this is like the easiest way to do it. But, first things first. So a polynomial expression can be viewed as a difference of squares. In other words, in the form a squared minus b squared. If it can be, then we call this a difference of squares. Its factor form would be a plus b times a minus b. Or you could flip that around a minus b times a plus b. Either way. Uh, for this lesson, I'm just going to say a plus b times a minus b, just for clarity. So, if we can identify a a squared and a b squared, we can do a difference of squares. So, um, here's some examples and some non-examples. a is a difference of squares. A, x squared minus 81. Um, what we're looking for is uh, basically that minus sign between the two terms. And then, um, yeah, so b is not an example. We could factor that, but it's not a difference of squares because of that plus 24x. Uh, C is technically a difference of squares right here. We have our x squared term, and we have minus another term. Um, that technically is a, a difference of squares. But D is not. D is not because of the plus sign. x squared minus 64 would be a difference of squares, but not x squared plus 64. B, e, F, and G would all be difference of squares. There are those two terms with a minus sign in between. And what we're saying is I can take that first term and write it as something squared, and I can take that second term and write it as something squared. But H is not a difference of square for the same reason that D is not, because of that plus sign. All right, so let's do some examples. If I have X squared minus 36, I could rewrite that as x squared minus 6 squared. Well, x would be our a, and 6 would be our b. So a plus b would be x plus 6, and a minus b would be x minus 6. So this is factor form right here. OK, the next one we can rewrite as 6x quantity squared. So brackets around the 6x, so that we're squaring the 6 and the x and we're subtracting 1 squared, because 1 is the same thing as 1 squared. So our a value is 6x, and our b value is 1. So our factored form for this difference of square would be 6x plus 1 times 6x minus 1. Our next example we could write as 4 squared minus the quantity 5x squared, so 5x in brackets, squared. Our a value is 4, our b value is 5x, so here's our factored form. Take a moment, make sure each example makes sense to you, and then we'll move on. Some more complicated ones. So, uh, and then one thing we're kind of noticing here is if I just take the first term and I square root it, I get the a value. And I take the second term and I square root it, I get the b value. So 36x squared, I square root that, I get 6x. Well, that's the a value. Square root of 1 is just 1. That's the b value. That's true for all of these. So the square root of, oh sorry, so, so the first one, um, the a value is just x, and then the b value, the square root of y to the power of 6 is y to the power of 3. So we could say y to the power of 3 to the power of 2 in place of y to the power of 6. We split up the exponent. b would then be y to the power of 3. Or we could say b is equal to the square root of y to the power of 6 to get that. All right, so, so our a value is x. Our b value is y to the power of 3. So here's factored form. Example e, again, we could take the square root of the first term. The square root of 49y squared is just 7y. So 7y is our a value. The square root of 81x to the power of 6 is 9x to the power of 3. So 9x to the power of 3 is our b value. So we could write out our difference of squares right here. 
All right, class one. Again, the square root of, the, of one is just one. The square root of the second term, four x to the power of six y to the power of two, is two x to the power of three times y. So this is our b value, and we'll write it in there accordingly. All right, three more examples, and these ones are, are kind of where it gets, uh, let's say we turn up the heat, right? This is where all the little nuances and tricks come in. And all the nasty stuff that I can throw at you, right here on this slide. Example G, if we do difference of squares, our A value is 4, and our B value is Y squared. But what we notice is, one of those terms is also a difference of square. So we have a difference of square inside of a difference of squares. So we could factor that term as well. The first term with the plus sign is not a difference of squares, so we don't factor that one. But the second one is a difference of squares. So the a value in this difference of squares is 2, and the b value is y. So here's our final answer right here. In general, what we say is when we do difference of squares, we'll factor it out if doing so leaves us nice whole numbers. We want nice whole numbers, and we want nice whole number exponents as well. Example H and example I, we'll get into some examples of that. But for this one, example G is done. Example H, uh, we could factor this out, difference of squares, but first I notice that the first and the second term can both be divided by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor of 2 first. If I do that, I end up with x to the power of 4 minus 4. And that's an easier difference of squares to factor. It's smaller numbers, it makes, makes it easier to calculate. Unless you're a computer, but whatever. So now we have the 2 factored out, and we're going to find the difference of squares for x to the power of 4 minus 4. Well, that's going to be x squared is our a value, and 2 is our b value. So we'll get x squared plus 2 as a factor, x squared minus 2 as a factor. So we have 2 times x squared plus 2 times x squared minus 2. Now I know what you're thinking, x squared minus 2, that's the difference of squares. And you're right, we could do that. Um, we would get uh, this thing factored out, our a value would be x, and our b value would be the square root of 2. And I know you're thinking, oh, we could factor that, yay, let's do it. Um, but anyways, so we could factor this out and get uh, a non-whole number in our difference of squares. In general, when we do difference of squares, we stop when we get to the point of whole numbers where the next step would give us non-whole numbers or irrational numbers. So because uh, I see difference of squares and I get one more term, I get a square root. This makes Mr. Jansen's happy to see, but it is above and beyond uh, what is required for dip factoring. Um, usually you just keep it until you can't get any lower than whole numbers. So delta math would say this is fully factored. Mr. Janssen's would probably troll a little bit and say you can go one step further. The reason why you don't usually do that is because if you open that box, or, um, what you're doing is you're opening Pandora's box because because now technically this is difference of squares. And then the question becomes when do I stop? Because that would be the square root of x plus or minus the square root of the square root of 2. And you could just go on forever. For that reason, we just stop at, you know, nice whole numbers. Okay, anyways, last example, greatest common factor. We're going to factor out first. We can factor a 5 out, and we can factor 2x's out. Once we pull the 5x squared out, we can do difference of squares with the remaining binomial. We get 2 plus x to the power of 5 minus, or times 2 minus x to the power of 5. And again, if I recognize this last factor is technically a difference of squares, but we're not going to factor it because then that would give us non-whole numbers. And then we get back to the question, when do you stop? So we're going to call this fully factored, and we're going to leave it be. This being the second term, not the bottom term. All right, so uh, that's the examples for this lesson. We now know how to identify difference of squares. We now know how to factor difference of squares. 
and we know when to stop factoring differences squares, equally as important. And hopefully we have more confidence working with polynomials. Good luck on your homework. This is my cheesy smile.